Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, if you're driving or just listening, don't need to see this at all. It is a movie review on Capricorn One, but I can't show it to you anyway. And, you know, there's no reason to watch clips of the movie and the, the types of things that we're going to talk about here. Uh, also, since I was so blown away as to how good it was, this had always been on my list for a long time. People send me stuff weekly. I have this whole list. Matt, check this out. Check that out. I have a whole list of things I need to get to. This had always been on the list, but I watched the trailer a few times and it just looked a little cheesy. 1978, you know, O.J. Simpson is one of the crew members, Elliot Gould. I was like, eh, it's not high on my list. I was very, it's very impressive considering 1978, the budget. You know, it drags it. And in parts, but overall, very, very impressive. And I won't give any spoilers away, any real spoilers, guys. Of course, by now we should all know the premise here, so I'm going to talk about that and a few scenes related to that. But once it gets into the middle and the ending, I'm not going to go there in case anybody wants to see it or hasn't seen it, you know, for 35 or 40 years. It is 1978, but uh, I was very impressed. I didn't expect anything. Um, but, and I was even, I, I mean, this is a movie that even if I haven't seen, I should be intimately familiar with, with what we do, like, um, you know, They Live, for example, you know, how many, there's people in the truth community that haven't seen that movie, but we've seen so many scenes so many times, we know every aspect of what They Live is about. I thought this was about a fake moon mission. It's about a fake Mars mission. Again, I'm not going to give the spoilers away at the end, but, you know, the basic premise here, I guess we all should know by now. And in the movie, they acknowledge that Neil Armstrong definitely went to the moon. They, they lay that down as being completely real. But it's the same old story that the public's interest in these missions are waning. We need to do something special. You know, we need to go for Mars. And uh, right here in the movie poster uh, for Capricorn One, and it stars O.J. Simpson as a crew member, but he doesn't have many speaking lines, a very minor role. I forget the name of the lead actor and the other two actors who are the who are the crew members but they've been in you know for 20 things uh, over the years since they did this in 1978 telly savalas pops up plays a crop duster at the end very funny interesting little role very minor but but really adds to the movie at the end and elliot Gould is the investigative reporter trying to get to the bottom you know what's going on he does a pretty pretty good job but right in the movie poster it says would you be shocked to find out that the greatest moment of our recent history may not have happened at all? And we're all like in this community, like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Almost every single greatest moment that they say is the greatest moment in our history didn't happen at all. And, and some of it is actually documented on record at this point. It's not even conspiracy at this point. So I'm going into this thinking about it's a fake mission to the moon. It's about a fake mission to Mars. And let me describe... Uh, the first scene. I'm going to change the scenery here. There's these thumbnails are so, so captivating. Change the scenery a bit. Uh, there's the movie set where they, again, if you're not, if you're not seeing this, you're missing nothing so, here. Um, it starts out really interesting that, you know, the, there's the capsule. It's loaded with gematria. I'm not a gematria person. It does not sit well with the way my mind works. I'm not a numbers person, you know, to add things. I'm like doing fingers. I, I just, it just, my mind doesn't work that way. And even the gematria, how that it was it's just jumping out at me. Okay, so let's just get the basics out of the way. This isn't going out on a limb, of course, in terms of what we look at, but there's no way that this is just some, you know, again, some writers, um, you know, decided to put an interesting script together in Hollywood, said, oh, this would be interesting. And no, you know, there are just much greater, grander reasons why this stuff has to be put out, while, why the idea of a faked space mission has to be put out re relating to how the control structure here and the creeps almost have to do business, you know, almost like by, by contract. They, the, the truth has to be shown through art, through media, through music, through through movies. So this, of course, I mean, wait till we look at the Wikipedia page. Whenever there's like a hint of conspiracy in something, this rule hasn't been broken for like two years. When I go over to Wikipedia, there's always a whole litany of strange things on the Wikipedia page that just reinforce or confirm or feed back into the conspiracy. It never fails. 
lit, and, it, and it, it's just this sort of thing where I, where I keep saying the same things over. We live in some sort of script that there's just, you know, some sort of matrix script of which the likes of which we don't understand. But before we get, you know, way out there, let's just go back to the basics. Um, the first scene is really interesting. They show the capsule, you know, T minus whatever, the Gematria is coming with all the, the numbers. And it's, you know, you, you get the sense that this is a little bit, you know, better done. Is this an, an old movie poster? Did they redo this? No, this is, yeah, this is an old one. So they're in the capsule. And what's so really cool about the first scene is you kind of know the premise that it's going to be about a fake mission. And then I, I realized it was about a fake mission to Mars, where I, I probably said I thought it was about a fake mission to the moon. Do, do the astronauts know? And you get a sense pretty quickly. They don't even know. And, you know, they're put in their their capsule, you know, countdown, you know, flip, flipping their little buttons and, and levers, and it seems... And then right before the thing's about to, to blast off, the hatch opens. And I don't know if it's their, one of the NASA directors, and they're like, gentlemen, come with me. You know? And it's like, oh, they, they're, you know, okay, they, they, they didn't know. They didn't tell the crew until a minute before the thing's about to blast off. And again, I'm not going to give away spoilers for the middle of the end, but I, I do have to talk about you know, this, this part just to for anybody that doesn't want to see it. And again, it's 1978. Probably saw it anyway. So they take the three astronauts out, and they're, of course, O.J. Simpson and these guys are like, what is going on? They take him down, put him in a van, take him to a helicopter, put him on a private plane, and, you know, they're not give, getting any information. They're, they're taken to some remote, you know, CIA warehouse, and, you know, you know, sit down here, we have, I have something to tell you. And one of the NASA directors comes in, and he gives them a story, of course, that, that they buy— but, you know, it seems like, of course, that it's just a total BS story. They say to the astronauts to get them to go along with what's about to come. The, one of the NASA directors says, you know, we found out the life support because it was built by the lowest bidder. and It's cheap ass Chinese crap. It's going to fail. You, if you were to get in there, you'd be dead. You wouldn't make it to Mars. You wouldn't make it to land on Mars and back. You'd be dead. But because... We need the public interested in space. We have to go forward, and we have to fake this. And you guys have to go into a studio. You know, they're, they're they've just come off a private jet. Let me and the guys like I'm not even going to tell you anymore. Let's go into the next room, and they walk into the next room, and there's the studio. You know, there's the people sending in the fake transmissions, and then they go to the, the to the the set where it's going to be faked. And again, they're told that. You guys would be dead. I mean, this it wouldn't work, and we can't afford a failure, so we have to go through with this. And it kind of lets them buy it. Like, eh, I could see why. And what the colonel, the main uh, astronaut, uh, whatever his his name was, the, the the famous actor, he's like, I don't think I can do this. And he's he's pushing back. Where O.J. Simpson, the other guys, like, you know, yeah, we have to do this. You know, so many people are, are riding on this, and if we we'd be dead anyway. And, you know, of course, that whole, it just seems like a complete line, of course, about, about you know, it's easier to get these guys to go along with it, saying, if you were to, if, you know, we saved your life, if you would have blasted off, you'd be dead. Well, of course, that they don't, it doesn't, they, the movie presents that aspect that that's real, but, you know, and you can see through it that that's just complete bullshit. It was probably going to be faked from the beginning, because they had no chance of doing it, just like what Elon Musk is eventually going to do will be faked from the beginning. Um, there you go. So one guy, it gets, and then you get into the, the dark side, the deep state and all this, the, the main astronaut, he's going to see, he's going, I can't do this. You guys can, I don't, I don't lie like this. And then one of the NASA directors, you know, the real dark side comes out and he's like, well, do you realize the, you know, the powers that be that are behind this? You know, right now your families are flying on a plane together. And then it, you know, it, it he quickly comes out. It becomes very clear to him. Are you are you threatening my my families? And the guy, you know, one of the NASA directors know, knows this lead astronaut. He's known him for for sixteen years. He says and he, he emphasizes that they've, and he's like, I, look, I don't. It's not me, but you got to understand the powers that be that are behind behind this. You know, you get that sense, um, just like the famous Woodrow Wilson quote. Uh, where we're in in the famous um, I don't want to show you anything that will give away a spoiler. In the famous Woodrow Wilson quote 
Um, of course, it's all a, a setup. You know, Woodrow Wilson wasn't trying to help anybody, and it wasn't a real quote, all a setup. Um, but, it, but nevertheless, a, a, a real quote attributed to him because the system has to show truth um, in, in different ways, as we've looked at many times over the years. Woodrow Wilson, you know, you've, you've all seen it. Um, there's a power that exists here on this earth. I mean, I'm butchering it. It's something like that. So great, so grand, so all-encompassing, so all-powerful, so pervasive that when the most powerful men in business and industry complain about it, they do it in a whisper. You know, when the Bill Gateses of the world and the Dr. Bezos is, or that's, sorry, Dr. Evil, um, when they complain about it, people that you think are all-powerful, presidents, prime ministers, when they complain about it, they do it in a whisper. It's that much higher than what you think real authority is. And you get that sense when he's saying your family's on a plane. You know, like you'd say, well, who's who would be powerful enough to blow the plane up? Like, you know, and it, Utopia, we need to talk about the British um, series that um, Izzo uh, turned me on to a little while ago, a, U- Utopia, not the remake, not the not that clown show. Uh, I think there was a, it's the original one, probably 10, 12 or 15 years old. It's all about basically what's happening now. The uh, Russian flu, all about what is, what is the jab, but we'll talk about Utopia some other time. It was pretty amazing series, 12 episodes, I believe. But that show, relatively low budget as well, you get this sense in the same way that there's this power that is beyond in the shadows. You know, you have people that you think are in control, like generals and presidents, but then there's this, this, this power in the shadows that pulls strings and pull, like, because we don't know how it works, you know, I tend to say reality buttons and levers. I don't just say that, you know, in a joking fashion. I do, I do believe that there is, a, there is something here that understands the nature of how reality works in a quantum or metaphysical sense, how collective consciousness actually shapes reality. I mean, you know, maybe that's what CERN is all about, or, you know, again, I'm not going to give any stock to to D-Wave, or I'm I'm still going to call it a snow cone machine until clowns like Geordie Rose show us that it actually does something, or it actually contributed to something, or contributed to an invention. Until then, it's a snow cone machine to me. But there, there is when I say reality buttons and levers, I'm I'm being pretty literal. You know, they do understand things that would probably blow our our minds. So it, the movie does a great job with this whole deep deep state deep state uh, aspect and um, how it gets. And I'm not going to give any more of the movie away than this. Let me go down. You know, Elliot Gould here. Um, you know, again, 1978, low budget. There's some things that you'll you'll say, well, oh, that's just how would that happen? But if you get through those parts, it's really good. Um, Elliot Gould, as a reporter, happens to know the one guy in the control room who's noticing that the the tre- telemetry and things aren't adding up. So this one little guy in the control room um, keeps going to, um, I guess this is the NASA boss up here, the guy to the right of Elliot Gould. He's a famous actor as well keeps going to this guy and saying, I, I, I'm, I'm running my own programs and, you know, where the signal's coming from, it just doesn't add up. And the guy's like, you're running, you're running your own programs? You went off the script? Nobody told you to do your own thing. So this guy keeps, he keeps poking around the, and he's not shown here. This, you know, young guy who's a nobody, but he's sitting behind one of these control panel boards. And one day his, 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 his uh, terminal is covered up and 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 has a, a tarp over it, and he's gone. I wonder what happened to him, right? So Elliot Gould just happens to be friends with this guy, and I'm not going to say any more because it'll start to spoil it. But he he gets involved. Like, what happened to my friend, and what was he trying to tell me the last time I saw him? So Elliot Gould starts poking around inside powers of which are very high up that which he can't understand or, you know, all encompassing Woodrow Wilson quote powers. And he gets into some hot water and it's, it's again, it, it, in the middle, it struggles a bit, but I, I, I'm, very, I'm very, very impressed with, um, you know, with, with the way they, they did this on what seems to be a relatively low budget. 
let's take a look at this before we go over to the Wikipedia page. Um, there have been other movies, and of course, if you include TV, probably hundreds of references, major references that allude to the fact in a subtle way or using comedy that nobody landed on the moon in Diamonds Are Forever. It's Sean Connery, still James Bond. He's being chased by the bad guys in Diamonds Are Forever. And he runs through the moon set where they're, you know, they're filming. And this was just two years. I, this is like 71 or 72. So two or three years, something like that, from the original Apollo 11 or, or, or Apollo 17. And, um, of course, you know, 99% of the people that saw this always just funny. They didn't think for one second nobody went. But it's what's that's what's being said here. I mean... Look at Interstellar. They just they keep they'll keep recycling the theme. Interstellar. Matthew McConaughey sits down. I guess he's doing a parent teacher thing, and um, he's like, "You're teaching our kids that nobody went to the moon," and it is a weird scene because the teacher's like, "Well, of course um, we're teaching that now because nobody went," and it was uh, I don't know what she says in Interstellar it was fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union, but whatever the Matthew McConaughey's character is supposed to be an astronaut. He's see, he's supposed to be highly connected more than your average farmer, but he didn't know it's in, it's just a strange scene where the teacher's like, of course, nobody went to the moon and that's what we're teaching the kids. Well, Matthew McConaughey seems surprised. Wouldn't he know as an ex astronaut? I don't know. Anyway, this is all when you, when this stuff appears, it's not it's not for fun. It's because for lack of a better way to explain it, they have to show us. I mean, we know that by now. Even if see, even if I can't come up with a great argument as to why that is, just the fact that if I was taking a podium arguing that against somebody, just the sheer magnitude of that I could we could pull for us a thousand things where they showed us and say, Why well, have a thousand things here like this? across all different conspiracy topics, but you're saying they don't have to show us. Somebody, and, and actually a big segment of the Truth Committee would call, still pull out the first grade response. It was just mockery. It just They just keep getting off on the same things over and over again. There's nothing else deeper going on. Just mockery. And you know what I think about that. And of course the whole Diamonds Are Forever in the title of the Bond film is part of the whole 100-year diamond scam. Um, you know, diamonds had no standing over any other gem like rubies or emeralds. It was, of course, we've been over this a million times, completely fabricated where, um, what was it? The Rothschilds got involved, um, in, uh, South Africa via the, uh, what was Cecil Rhodes? It was, you know, the Rhodes Scholarship got involved with Cecil Rhodes and they pushed it. They just marketed it. Probably, probably they put diamonds to the forefront because they had the biggest supply of diamonds. They, they you know, they, they were apparently, you know, the, the amount of diamonds that exist in this world, controlled by De Beers and Rothschild, they're probably worth about a dollar each. So um, they pushed it through Marilyn Monroe. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. And then they pushed it right through the movie title. Diamonds are forever uh, in in the Bond. Incredible. Okay, Wikipedia, 1978 American thriller film. Elliot Gould, James Brolin. Let's, you know, the plot usually here in Wikipedia will give everything away, so we'll get through this. Just to show you uh, some of the cast, everybody knows who Elliot Gould is. Um, James Brolin. Okay, that's, you know, he's really kind of a cool guy in this movie, very young. He's been in a lot of things. And um, I wanted to show you, he's, this is the other, We've seen, I, I, what is he, he's in a TV series, he's been in it forever, that I don't watch, but you know him, and of course, a interesting part of, you know, the quote conspiracy that will pop up, and it's always attached to the things we look at when we start to um, poke around into the Wikipedia, will come up related to the O.J. Simpson, is anybody surprised, that fraud, um, production development, okay, this guy is the director, or put it together, this Peter Hyams, all right? So it says, Peter Hyams began thinking about a film of a space hoax while working on broadcasts of the Apollo missions for CBS. 
Okay. It just, again, guys, I, I'm sorry if I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Whenever I go, I, I think, okay, there's conspiracy here. It starts to emerge. The script of this reality starts to emerge. And whenever I go over to the Wikipedia, it just confirms it over and over and over and gives me things that I didn't even know about that confirm my original position. How many times does this have to happen before, again, what's he going to say? This world isn't very real. What else do people get, people get on me for saying that, but what what other conclusion is there? And I'm not going to completely understand it in this avatar, so I can't talk about it in a more intelligent manner. All I can say is it's not real. So um, he, he began thinking about a, a space hoax film while working on the broadcasts of the Apollo missions. Right, if that's not a truth drop, because the Apollo missions are a hoax, I mean, obvious. Anyway, he later reflected regarding the Apollo 11 moon landing. There was one event of really enormous importance that had almost no witnesses, and the only verification we have came from a TV camera. This is just plain obvious truth. He later elaborated, and people reading this, you know, just the regular guy down the cul-de-sac, believes... Neil Armstrong actually walked on the moon, believes everything's completely real, and believes this is real. That Oh, this guy just happened to be thinking about it being fake. When it's just so ridiculous. So, again, that we can see this stuff so easily, and people around us are so lost. Whenever there was something on the news about a space shuttle, they would cut to a studio in St. Louis. Yeah, where there was a situation of what was going on. I grew up in the generation where my parents basically believed if it was in the newspaper, it was true. That's exactly like my mom. That turned out to be bullshit. Oh, said Hyams. Well, oh, he's dropping truth. My generation was brought up to believe television was true. And that was bullshit, too. Oh, nice, Peter. So I was watching these simulations, and I wondered what would happen if someone faked a whole story. So... Yeah, anyway, again, this guy's no hero on our side. You know, th this guy and a, teaming up with a guy named Lazarus. Lazarus. Matt, that's his name. What do you mean? There's no conspiracy. I, I, It's just part of how the weird script we live in works. He teams up with Paul Lazarus. You know, of all the gin joints in all the world, of all the names of all the world... You know, it's just the same ridiculous stuff over and over again. Um, budget, $4.8 million. Okay. Then they presented it to, um, it says, let's just go back here. Hyams wrote the script in 1972, but nobody wanted to make it. So he started thinking about it and started putting everything together right after the, 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 at least the initial Apollo mission. He says interest in the script was reactivated by the Watergate scandal where Watergate scandal showed us or tried to remind the American public that most everything is fake and they, they still don't get it, still don't get it even today. He attached producer Paul Lazarus. Attached him for his name, probably. Well, how does that relate in The Rising of the Dead? I don't know, but it's just a creepy way they work. I don't know. Just, just point at the Matrix code. I can't always read it. To stay within the budget, NASA's cooperation was needed. Oh, why wouldn't NASA cooperate uh, about a movie where it gets millions and millions and millions of people thinking about that everything could be actually fake? Because th they have to, you know, for some weird occult reason, they have to. Lazarus had a good relationship with the space agency, of course, because of Future World. The filmmakers were thus able to obtain government equipment as props, despite the negative portrayal of the space agency, including a prototype Apollo lunar module. That right there could be mockery. It also could be, quote, you know, I don't know, part of the spell. You actually get the real stuff that NASA used to fake Apollo with, or Mercury, Gemini, Apollo. You get the real stuff they used for real to fake, it's it's fake, but it, it's a real fake. So that was it was the real fake. The movie's the fake fake. You get the you get the real stuff that was used in the real fake in the fake fake, and maybe that completes the the loop on the spell or something. I mean, who knows how these creeps do business? But <clears throat> it just feeds into you know the same script. Is anybody at the end of the day, um, if, if what I just said didn't make any sense, I guess it didn't. Is anybody surprised that this movie? 
went back and got real items <laughs> from NASA that was used in the real fake. This is the fake fake. Now get this. Um, shooting. Filming started in January of 1977. Filming took place at the Cinema Center Films in Studio City and in the Red Rock Canyon State Park. Red Rock Canyon State Park to mimic the Mars surface. That's probably where they land the Discovery and the, um, what, the, the stuff that Matt Damon came across when he was on Mars. That It's always JPL. Always, why is it JPL? Why is it always Parsons and JPL sending out his fraudulent rovers <laughs> to Mars? It's that of all the same script. Um, now check this out. Because it can't just be weird on its own. It has to get even weirder. It just has has to. It, you know, it gets back to when I said, you know, right after right after the Kobe beef uh, incident, I said, is there ever going to be a major world news story that when you, we start, we in this community start looking into, it's not going to be riddled with conspiracy? And everyone was like, you know, agreed with what I was putting forth. Like, no. Everything of any major announcement or event that that is put out through the news is always at this point going to be riddled with conspiracy it's the same way when you go back it's like a retro causality it's the same when you go back and look at something it's like what the reality has to devolve into so check this out hyams the director producer later joked oj simpson was in my film and he was in a capricorn one of course and robert blake was in his first feature called busting now, busting was was the uh, premise initially, they said, for Starsky and Hutch. And he said many times, some people have Lifetime Achievement Awards, some people win Oscars. My uh, claim to fame is I had two leading men who were subsequently tried for first-degree murder for their wives. So he can't... Blake, remember? Let me see if his picture will pop. Remember? First-degree murder trial? O.J. Simpson? That's his claim to fame. I put two leading men in that were both tried for first-degree murder for killing their wives. Um, Matt, where are you going here? That's got to be a coincidence. Of course, generally, yes, it's a coincidence, but it's just when you... It's part of the strange reality script. This, these strange anomalies or oddities are endless every time we look at something. Doesn't that point to the, the people that get on me saying that... that, that when I say the world isn't very real, every time we look at something, it's just riddled with gematria, strange anomalies like this. You had to get this guy named Lazarus involved because he knew NASA. Come on. It's just this world's a joke. It's a joke. It, no, I keep on the table. It may have been very real when we were born, much more so. And it's somehow, it's not all or none. I, I almost, this is becoming more and more to the forefront for me. It's almost being devolved into more fluid, into a more of a digital, into something that's more vague, into something that's less real. Not that, not you know, per quantum physics and everything, maybe, it, you know, what is, you know, what's an atom made of? Well, it's made of a quark. What's a quark made of? You can't trace it back forever. At some point, something can only be made up of itself, which is impossible. So things break down at the very small, they break down at the very large. That always was the case, even when we were born. But there seems to be this phenomenon where things made more sense, when you looked at something, it wasn't riddled with gematria, wasn't riddled with conspiracy. It almost seems like it's the reality itself. You know, we expect if things are going to change, we're going to wake up one morning and the uh, sky is going to be uh, black and the grass is going to be purple. No, it it might you no, know, it might be a a slow devolution. Again, I don't. I've been saying that word for years. I still don't know if it's a real word. Word like a slide into the uh, into into the not real. They're like trying to slide us into the digital. Something weird like that going on. That's why it just breaks down. Every year gets stranger and stranger. We'll talk about that in the future. But um, you know, what it based on all this ridiculousness, every time we look into something, somebody in, even in this community is going to come forth and like things are completely real here. Yeah, you know, everything is exactly as it seems. Not, it's a joke. All right. Check this out. It just doesn't end. It doesn't end. You know, just looking at Wikipedia for anything controversial that we look at. It doesn't end. Hams, Hyams or Hams, whatever, later said, Audience just st audiences just stood up and cheered at one point in the film. It wasn't because it was such a great movie. It's just that certain movies strike certain chords with people. 
audience stood up and cheered. Now, look, it's a good movie. I'm recommending it. But let's just, even if, okay, if it's not true, then it's a truth drop. He's saying, you know, he's saying audiences stood up and cheered because they recognized the truth in it that almost everything NASA does is complete BS. So it could be a truth drop and it never happened. But maybe, maybe it really did happen. Maybe in certain crowded theaters, audiences did stand up and cheer. It sounds ridiculous to me for, for this type of movie. It's, 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 it's good, guys, but it's not that good. But if they did, then there was something inside of them, a truth that was ne- needed to come out. The truth of the movie... Like, in other words, there could be an aspect of them that realized everything Neil Armstrong and a buzzed cauldron did was complete BS. And then and a certain aspect of that, of them realized that something deep inside or something associated with their subconscious or so, something associated with their higher self. I don't know. And it just caused them to really embrace this movie almost emotionally, where if you interviewed these people as they walked out, still crunching popcorn, like shoving huge amounts into their mouth, they'd say, did you, when you, you were, you were cheering at one point, did you, did you get a sense that like this movie's exposing truth that what NASA's saying they're doing isn't real? The person would be like, the ego would take over the frontal lobes. It'd be like, well, of course not. I believe, of, who wouldn't believe, you know, this is just, again, 10 years later, like who wouldn't believe Neil Armstrong walked on the moon? Their conscious mind, you know, wouldn't be aware of anything. Um, I do, you know, there are several, as- many aspects to all of us, all fighting for control. So um, even though they might have stood up and cheered because they're, they're embracing this element of truth and they saw the truth in it, their conscious mind would never, would never realize that. And of course, that's just, you know, that just gets worse as the decades go on. So we have the script zombies that we have now, which I'm now, per the last video, calling drifters, life drifters. Let's go back to the Zabruta Pictures and um, see if there's anything that I missed. Um, this is the scene. You know, this is this is where they're boarding the capsule. Everybody's, you know, even 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 um, one of the the things that's very interesting about this movie, guys, is very few people are in on it. Okay, I didn't I didn't talk about that. Very few people are aware they're about to board the capsule. All three astronauts have no idea what's going to happen. Somebody opens, comes and just opens up the hatch, you know, a minute later and says, get out. This guy who is a lower level um, flight director or whatever, who puts them in the capsule, he doesn't know most likely what's going to happen. The people back even in Mission Control, Houston Mission Control, most of them don't know. Remember, a guy at his console went to one of the directors and said, something's not right with my screen here. So none of the guys that you see or girls that you see at their at their terminals, looking at the numbers, at least how, that's how they presented it in the old movies, looking at their green screens and their DOS prompts, none of them are in on it. They're getting feeds from somewhere else. So one of the main themes that flows through this movie, if you believe you know, these movies are truth drops the, the way I believe they are, and, and we've talked about that in the past, if you, then the, the main, one of the big truths that comes through is you know, something that, that I've... Um, been talking about for a long time, how very, very few people are in on it, uh, far less than you would think. Um, Even in the the Utopia series about the Russian flu and the Jacksonations, and it's all about Utopia, the 12 episodes, it's all about what's happening now to a degree. It's scary. But there is this, this overriding, you know, Illuminati you know, control structure that's that's just pulling levers and the people, most of the, and it's a very small group in, in a Utopia. Most of the people on the ground are, are not aware of anything. And um, that is also the theme here in Capricorn 1. And of course, you know, you know, I, I'm just saying, I'm not, I, and people misinterpret what I say here. I'm not saying nobody's in on it. I'm just saying it's far, far fewer than as many as you would think, you know, in terms of what Congress understands at the congressman level or congresswoman level, they understand nothing. They're in for Nancy Pelosi. That's about it. Then they're in for two years. If they start to sniff around, they're punted out. Even in the Senate, you know, Chuck Schumer, sure, creeps like that. 
McCain probably did. But but other you know other than ten fifteen senators that can be influential, probably the other eighty five have no clue as to how almost any part of reality works. There's very few, and we we give too many people credit um, of being in on it when they're not. And um, again, what kind of world? could pull that off with the, the the amount and the degree of things that are quote pulled off where you know you just have a tiny little group that is supposedly in the know and in on it so there's somebody that I, I email back and forth with Matt we'll just you know his name's Matt like mine and um, he kind of represents a whole wing of the conspiracy truth our, our group that believes a whole lot more people are in on it. Um, there have been, you know, YouTube videos put out by a lot of smart people that say, no, Matt, you know, you're, you're Matt, Matt M, me, I'm wrong. There's these, you, you, you go down to your, you know, local business and they have the, you know, the three triangles as their logo. They're, they're in, they're in the know. You just, you don't have no idea the amount. And I totally disagree. Totally disagree. <laughs> um, like in, like that that this idea, or or what what Matt is thinking is more like the movie was it Society, where the kid is growing up a normal high school kid. We I covered that about a year ago. The movie Society, and even his parents are going to these secret society meetings. He doesn't even know his parents. His sister is going to the secret society meetings and the orgies. His neighbors almost like the whole community lives in. Beverly Hills or Hollywood Hills, but everybody's involved, and he's just, you know, some jock in high school, and he doesn't, he didn't know anything, so I don't think, I, I'm I'm on the other, you know, maybe this will be interesting, we could do this in the comments sometime, but I'm more uh, on the other side, that very few people have a true understanding, much, 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 much less than what you would think, and somehow... You know, I know it sounds like a cop out where I say the reality itself. You know, if you, if 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 you know, if if these ancient bloodlines exist and they do carry knowledge through their incarnations, and you know, they, they have certain buttons and dials and levers and know how collective conscious manifests things, and you know, you could if you with that sort of knowledge, you probably could get a lot done. You know, if you were that in the know with a tiny, tiny group being in on it, I don't think every little guy that runs the Home Depot needs to be in on it. I absolutely not. I'm the opposite, but just there's a lot of smart people that don't agree with me. And I guess we'll do a we'll do a Royal Rumble sometime uh, via the comments to which which side uh, you know you have, uh, you're on in that regard. The way we need to do this again, the way we did a few months ago, saying, "Do you are you someone that believes there's you know once you understand who, the nature of who you really are, is there consequence here? Can you give away too many soul tokens? Can you damn yourself?" Where some people, you know, they some people uh, come to me can, a lot in email and, tell, and keep reminding me how there is no consequence, and you know I I know that their positions on that. I'm I'm still a believer there is tremendous consequence for it, but you know we could have that tail of the tape um, Royal Rumble fight via the comments sometime. Just say consequence, and then there's there's positions in the middle. Well, his positions are are um, are influential in you know in how I think about things. Tony will come to me and say, Matt, look, I I you know I appreciate what you're saying here and there, but you keep going back to this soul token thing and no, you're, you're higher. You're an aspect of higher self. You can, you, you can't just give yourself away and doom yourself to the abyss. He, so he's, you know, he would be one that would be not that there's no consequence, but it not as, not as simple as, you know, what I floated in the past where it seems like people around us are just, uh, they're degrading themselves down, um, where they almost are becoming an NPC by giving pieces of themselves away, contact, you know, endless contracts, you know, they're, they're in there. We, we all, everybody here in this community believes people give their energy away via loose, loose. So it's, it's, that's worth talking about in, in the future, of course. But what was relevant here is um, if we do a Royal rumble is how much of the world is in on it and how, or how little of the world is in on it. 
to get done and accomplish all that they get done. And of course, everybody listening to this thinks that's a given. All the stuff they pull off, all the schemes, all the manipulation, where incredibly everybody around us uh, just, they would think we're crazy. Think, what, what do you mean, get done? What, what, what schemes? What, this is just the way the, they would say, this is just the way the world works. It all can be easily explained. And they're not even aware that a bank makes up money when they give you a loan. That's the people that we're dealing with. And I, I have to get, every time I say that, I do, there is a little bird that lands on me and says, Matt, stop, that's division. And stop it. And I agree. I, I agree. You know, every time I say that, I, there's something, there's a little voice that says to me, Matt, when this world is out to create division as its number one basic goal, blocking and tackling, and every time you you talk about these people as drifters or whatever, you're creating division. I do struggle with this. I, I do. And, and maybe maybe I'll see that the, what, what I've done there is wrong. But, but for now, I don't know. For now, they're drifters. I'm, I'm open to changing my position. Thanks for watching and listening.